Welcome to Murphy, Sam, and Jody. After the show, brand new episode every single day. You guys remember, I have got to tell you about this show, this new show that's not really new. Um, okay, so remember Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Yeah. I don't remember how long ago it was. We loved Carson. We loved that show. Uh, that what was, was that, early 2000s? or Something yeah. like that. that long ago? Right. Yeah. And it was this team, and they would come in and help a straight guy. Like, learn to dress, learn to decorate your apartment, learn to date. They, you know, each of the five guys had an area of expertise. Right. It, it was brilliant then. And I knew that there was another, um, whatever, version of this show floating around Netflix. Is it a reboot or is it a... It's a reboot. Five it's called new guys. Queer Eye. Okay. Or, yeah. And it's it, they're called the Fab Five. Mm-hmm. And um, so Taylor and Phoebe are teenagers. Taylor's almost 18. Phoebe's 14. They were like, oh, this looks cute can i watch this and i'm like yeah but i want to watch one with you so episode one season one we turn it on and by the end of it i was crying it is so good really crying funny crying, well, crying I was, emotional well it's funny but i was honestly caught up in the makeover in the story okay so they go in the first episode and i'm not going to give away so much that you won't want to watch the first episode and it's the only one i've seen but the first episode, they travel to this farm, like, and this husband has asked this five, Fab Five team to come make over his wife. He's so busy. She's She works as a, a prison guard, I think. Mm-hmm. She is hunts with him. She handles the chickens, and she's, she's just a tomboy girl, but mm-hmm. she's beautiful, and she doesn't ever spend any time on herself. And he's like, she's beautiful. She doesn't think she's beautiful. And she never goes to the salon. She never does anything for herself. Mm -hmm. I would like for her to get this pampering treatment makeover from you guys. So they come in and it's crazy. Her number one thing that she wears all the time is camo. (laughs) And I can't, I can't, you know, oh, by the way, her name is Jody. Oh, is it really? Yeah. J-O-D-Y, she spells it. Anyway, so I'm hooked in because these guys are fabulous. One of them is... And I don't remember this from the old show, but one of them is in charge of, like, culture. Yeah, there was a culture one. Okay, so he literally, and he's wonderful. I love him. He might be my favorite, but then again, the fashion one is my favorite, too. Um, he really just helps her understand, like, when she stopped taking care of herself. And it's a, it's a big moment. Because there was a time in her life, something that happened where she stopped caring about, you know, taking care of herself. They take her shopping, but they only put her in things that she's comfortable in. Um, they redo the house for them. Yeah. Uh, there's a food and wine guy. Mm-hmm. It is so, and towards the end of it, it's literally about this woman and her self-esteem. And the culture guy, and I'm, forgive me for not knowing their names yet because I really have only watched one it's episode. It's a brand new cast. It's new to me. Um, brings her to a group of women. And he says, look, we're not telling you to be more feminine. We're just telling you to be more confident in yourself and you need to spend more time with women. She grew up with all brothers. She's She's got like, all bunch of boys and she spends all of her time like working in a male dominated job so she's mm-hmm. like he's like you need to spend more time with women who are all all different there's not one way to be a woman and that moment was just so beautiful it's mm-hmm. like you're beautiful the way you are but you just need to love yourself and i was literally crying like this show is so Fabulous and transformative. I think this, at least I know now there wasn't something that I did. You know? Oh no, sweetie. <laughs> this uh, I think the new. I've seen a couple of clips from the new version, mm-hmm. and I think it is more about transformation. Yeah, the inside. old version was more. I mean, each person had their area of expertise, but it was more of more entertainment than sure. and personal every all around improvement right it's it's fabulous uh, they t- i mean yeah you're gonna t- walk away with some decorating mm-hmm. tr- tricks because they got rid of the camo in her house and they let her keep a few dead animals on the wall like you know <laughs> but they redid everything and then it ends with her going on a you know date with her husband and it's just and there's there's a real love story there he really lo- he did this for her not because he wants her to change he wants her to love herself and and see herself the way he sees her mm-hmm. i mean i don't know and, and like phoebe told me because I, I had to go clean the you know, kitchen and walk the dogs. I didn't watch a second episode. Phoebe did watch a second episode, and she said it it wasn't to her as good as the first one. Mm-hmm. But she's gonna. I'm, I want to keep watching it, and I just had to shout out for it because it's lovely. Yeah, you know, it's not just about how to decorate a room or look better in jeans. You know, although him taking her shopping was interesting. Women, every woman 
probably could benefit from having one appointment with a stylist. Oh, yeah. Because she learned, like, you need to, you would look better this way as long as you're comfortable. Because everything he put on her, he's like, are you comfortable in this? Because you, you got to love it if you're going to wear it. Mm-hmm. So she ended up starting to wear some heels, which she hasn't done in years. They gave her a walking in heels lesson. Mm-hmm. She had not been to the hair salon in years, and she went to the salon. And he even told her, you don't have to become somebody you're not, but you should go to the salon three times a year. It was just a must-see, I think. You know, and a little flashback to the old version, the original. That's the one, and I'll admit yeah, I'll admit it right now, um, the the guy that dealt, dealt with the hair. Yes, and the, the stylist. Uh, yeah, the stylist. That's the one that taught me how to use product. Yeah, it's a great show. I mean, it was show. easy because when I, whenever I did, and, and also encouraged me to go to a salon rather than go to the barber shop. Really? Yeah. That's when your hair started looking more edgy. Ding! Now you can put two and two together. <laughs> Queer eye. But yeah, because yeah. it's like if you put product in your hair, I would just like, okay, rub it in. But this yeah. guy, his thing was, no, you got to take it and put it on both hands and mm-hmm. rub it all around, back, front, yeah. everywhere, not just... You know, where you think people are going to look. And sure. it was like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's a good show, Murphy. Yeah. yeah. Good. I, you know, I, what I love, about you you were saying about it being more storytelling and deeper now than the original. Not, not not, that there was nothing wrong with the original series, but I think there was a different time in reality TV. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that is what I love about Netflix and Amazon and HBO, all these original series now, is they can take the time to tell the story. Mm-hmm. And right. so, so you... you it's not going to be broken up by commercials every eight minutes where you've got to try to they follow along good. and everything has to be in bite size, right? Yeah. And um, I know it's not the same thing at all, but to me, the Quincy biography is a perfect example of that because yeah. you would never see that in broadcast TV and, you know, you probably wouldn't have seen it in a theater. No way. But, you know, to be able to sit there and get this man's story for a good two hours and 10 minutes yeah. and... But it's not just somebody telling him story, a story. You're seeing it through his eyes. It's mm-hmm. chronicle of his life. And that's why that moment to me and that, the most riveting moment about the Quincy Jones documentary was when he was going through the, it was at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that he was at, or he, there was a museum that he had gone through. Yeah. And and, and I'm, I don't remember which museum was it, he it was. realizing all the people he's lost? I think so. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, yes, that, that's his. I just can't remember the museum. But, um, but yeah, he was, all of the people that he was pointing out, you know, that Michael Jackson, he's lost that, you know, legend. And Leslie Gore, who was his first basic, you know, artist that he ever really produced. Mm-hmm. And um, so you see the human side of him, and I don't know that any other storytelling was like that. The before networks couldn't long give it form. to you right, like exactly. that. Yeah, truly. So I really, I, I'm, I'm all about, you know, these any new series that comes on any of those three Netflix, and I know I guess Hulu has original series too, mm-hmm. but any of those, the, I, I tend to kind of migrate towards those just to see what it's all about because I think yeah. I'm going to get something that's a little bit deeper it's, and different, like the Letterman series right now on Netflix. Yeah. The same way he sits down and he asks people, and they are more, I think, themselves than you would get from one of those stock documentaries because it's not uh, blocked in. Mm-hmm. You're in not bite blocked sized in pieces, by anything. Yeah. Um, I do want to say this. The other lovely thing about I probably would not have sat down to watch this with them, except that Phoebe understands there's a rule. You do not watch anything streaming or on Netflix or on Hulu without asking me first, because she's also super interested. You should know, Dad. She's super interested in watching um, the Zac Efron, Ted Bundy movie. No, because Zac Efron. She's like, I love Zac Efron. I'm like, yeah, but Ted Bundy. So she started doing some research and she knows some stuff about Ted Bundy. I don't love her going down that avenue, but she's 14, and she's interested in watching it. And I said, if you really, really want to watch it, please let me watch it with you. And let me talk to your dad about it. So the reason she said, hey, can I watch Queer Eye? I said, oh, Queer Eye, this is the reboot. She goes, what do you mean? I had to tell her it was an old (laughs) show before you were born. It was a hit show. And so that's why I ended up watching it with her, because she knows she's not allowed to watch anything without me approving it because there is also the downside of it is there's so much stuff there you don't want your kids watching mm-hmm. yeah and if well, they're home you, watching it while you're away well, but you've got parental controls you can set up 
Truth. The, the way, but the, the thing is, our girls are at the age right now where if you put the parental controls, it takes almost too much away. You know, mm. it would be right for an eight year old, but right. you know, I mean, there's some things that aren't too objectionable for a fourteen or sixteen. I know it. Old, I know know it. I know it. So anyway, uh, little I'll, tidbit for you: the first, the original Queer Eye. You know, Ted from Chopped, the host of Chopped. Yes, he was the food guy on the original uh, oh, Queer Eye. Oh, throwback, mm-hmm. throwback. 